Hello, everyone. Welcome back. So, yesterday I played in a chess tournament, and I played against Eric in one of the rounds. Probably most of you, if not all of you, know Eric Rosen. If you don't, he's an international master, one of the nicest human beings ever. Um, he has a large a YouTube channel, <clears throat> more than 500,000 subscribers, and uh, if you know him, you know his, or know my queen videos where he pretends to give up his queen, but actually it's a cunning move which would win the game. So I played him yesterday, which was fun, because he's one of the reasons why I decided to play the London. And he was white, and guess what? He played the London against me, and um, it was a really fun game, mainly for Eric. So I played d4, I play, um, I play d5, he played bishop f4, normal London, he played knight f6, he played knight c3, this is the Jobava London. Um, it's a little bit different from the regular London, instead of building a pyramid, um, we bring out this knight. Um, occasionally the knight wants to go here, but black can easily deal with it. It's actually not so amazing. Um, so if we look <clears throat> at the evaluation already, compared to things black is slightly better. Um, but, well, let's see what happened. I played one of the most natural moves. I played the second main move, pawn c5, to challenge the center. And now Eric surprised me and he played the move which in this position was only played seven times, which is pawn e4. Which looks a little bit crazy, it's a pawn sacrifice. Um, and black has a number of good moves here, I chose one of them. <clears throat> I took this pawn, uh, he took here, and his logic is that if I take his queen, he brings the rook into the game with tempo. So let's say it takes, takes. Now white has three pieces out. He has ideas over here. He occasionally has ideas connected to bishop here and rook d8. And I am in big trouble. So I didn't trade queens. Okay, for obvious reasons, I don't want him to take my queen because if I take back, I can't castle. So I play bishop d7, which is not terrible. I'm stopping a queen trade, I'm controlling this square. I didn't mind knight b5, which is what he did. Uh, <clears throat> um, uh, obviously he's ran this, and I thought I played queen a5, and I thought queen a5 was fine. Um, my logic here is I'm double attacking the knight, so if he blocks with the pawn, I take the knight. If he blocks with the bishop, and then I can just move my queen back um, because um, he's, once he moves the bishop, he's no longer threatening knight c7. So I just move my queen back. <clears throat> um, so I thought he would probably do this and then I would ask him to declare his intentions. And here Eric found a really nice move. I'm going to pause and uh, have you find it. I hope you were able to find a very cool looking idea. I've seen this idea before, so I'm slightly ashamed that I didn't find it. Um, the time control was game in 10 minutes, so I will use it as an excuse. But before, it's a very beautiful move. The point is, obviously, if I move my queen, this is bad. So I take, but now c3. And the logic is now he's not in check and he will get a fork. Okay, so I took this pawn, he forked. Um, I moved the king, he took the rook. And now it's still not so clear as you can see the bar says this is about even. Um, because yes, he's up a rook, but it's not clear if the knight can come out. I didn't want to take because white will block with the bishop, then he'll bring the rook to an open line, then it's easy for him to rescue his knight. So I play d5, which attacks his bishop, opens the door for my bishop. 
he attacked my queen. Again, I did not want to take same reason. He attacks my queen, then gets the rook on open line. So I played queen a5, <clears throat> because behind my queen there is a pawn. I actually shouldn't really care about that pawn, because if I move and he takes this pawn, then I can do this, for example. Um, but I played queen a5. He played queen b3, attacking my pawn and my other pawn, and I don't really care. Play knight c6. Because if he takes either of my pawns, I can play queen c3 with a four. Um, and here Eric found another really, really strong move. I'm going to pause and see if you can find it. And the move he found is very, very, very instructive. Uh, he played knight b6, which in my mind was impossible, but of course I forgot that after pawn takes, I get forked. That's not, that's a fork. Um, and I just lose. So I cannot take the knight, which means the knight saves itself. I played a couple more moves and eventually resigned because I'm down a rook. Um, so... Very, very nice move by Eric, and let this be an instructive moment. Um, a lot of people would just dismiss this move because it just looks so bad, but this is why it's so important to calculate more than one move ahead, um, both as an Italian player, but also as a defensive player. As a defensive player, I just assumed this was not possible because of my pawn, but of course it is, and that was my downfall. But... I met Eric, I got a chance to analyze with him afterwards, um, I look forward to seeing him again, I want to thank him for analyzing with me, we also talked about the Stafford and other things, so um, I, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will have more fun things coming up soon, thank you.